Hello, my name is Bryce Reeve and I'm a professor at the Duke University School of Medicine. And my topic for today is the validation of the observed reported communication ability measure or what we call the ORCA measure. Back in 2018, the FAST organization sent out a survey or questionnaire through its Facebook and other types of um, social media and asked parents and caregivers to tell them what outcomes would they like to see as an important indicator of whether a therapy is effective for their child with Angelman syndrome. The most consistent and popular choice among parents was speech and communication ability, that the parents want to see communication ability change in their children with Angel Sim Angelman syndrome. With that knowledge, the FAST organization, in anticipation of upcoming trials, wanted to make sure that there was a good, effective measure of communication to evaluate its treatments under study. Instead of developing a new measure, they first had to ask themselves, is there an existing communication measure of that is, meets the qualification for the Food and Drug Administration? After a thorough, thorough review of all existing measure communications, they found that there was a number of limitations, including most of the existing communications require some type of speech language pathologist or other communication expert to complete. And this typically requires a child to complete these you know, performance measures within a clinical or laboratory setting. And typically children in general, and especially children with Angelman syndrome, may not perform as well in a clinic or in a lab as they would in their home. And at no time during a very short session with a speech language pathologist can a child demonstrate all they know and can do in terms of communication. Another limitation of existing measures is none of these measures are, are developed for clinical trials. Many of them have been developed for use in therapy to identify where a child may have certain strengths or limitations. In addition, another limitation is that many of these existing measures um, were not based on best practices for the development and evaluation of surveys and questionnaires as multi-item scales. In addition, many of these questionnaires were not developed, um, including patient advocates, parent advocates, excuse me, in, as oversight and direction of the development of the measure. We also find that most existing measures um, require verbal speech and uh, as an indicator of, of a child's communication ability. And we know most children with Angelman syndrome are nonverbal and use other means to express themselves. In addition, we find that uh, uh, many children with Angelman syndrome are unable to be differentiated on the score metric of the existing measure. So what this means is because these existing measures are so advanced that all the children, most of the children with Angelman syndrome are score what we call the basement, the basement effect, which means they all get the exact same low score. And if everyone's getting the same score, you have no way to figure out who's has stronger or, or, or less so strong communication abilities. And then we find that many of these measures have never actually been validated in children with Angelman syndrome. And for all these limitations, the FAST organization contract with um, our university, the Duke University School of Medicine, with the goal for by 2020 that we would develop and evaluate a caregiver reported measure of communication ability for use in upcoming trials a clinical trial to evaluate the benefit of therapeutics for children with Angelman syndrome. Our research team, which is featured on the right side, includes uh, speech language pathologists, as well as experts in the quantitative and qualitative methods to develop and evaluate questionnaires. Overseeing our project was representatives from the FAST organization who are not just, um, uh, who don't just represent, represent the organization, but they're also parents of children with Angelman syndrome. And we were guided by the advisors of Emily Quinn and Sam Sennett. Now, our group follows a process to develop and evaluate questionnaires um, that is uh, well described by a number of organizations, including the FDA, 
the International Society for Quality of Life Research, as well as the International Society for Pharmacoeconomics and Outcomes Research. And these are the seven steps for which I'm going to walk you through and talk to you about some of our findings in the development of the ORCA measure. Our first step was just trying to get understanding of what is this concept we're measuring, how it differentiates from other concepts. And as you see in blue, um, our goal was to develop a measure uh, of communication ability that is impacted by a child's cognitive ability and their motor speech skills. And what we've learned through the literature and talking with experts that um, communication ability represents expressive, receptive, and pragmatic types of communication. In our next step, we wanted to hold, we conducted qualitative in-depth interviews with key stakeholders. And this includes both caregivers and parents, as well as speech language pathologists. And the goal of concept solicitation is to gain a much deeper understanding of how children with Angelman syndrome communicate on typical days and atypical days. And so we ended up interviewing 22 parents and six speech language pathologists. And the type of questions we asked in the concept solicitation phases were like, on a typical day, what kinds of things does your child communicate about? In addition, we asked parents, what would a meaningful change in communication look like for your child? We had a number of fascinating findings from our in-depth interviews with parents. And what we found in terms of the concepts that relate to communication fall within our three types of communication. So under expressive communication, parents talked about how the child might seek attention or direct attention, refuse an object or request an object, request for more, asking questions or communicating with others. Under receptive communication, we found that children uh, can respond to their name they may understand their parents' mew, mood. Uh, my, uh, it's important for children uh, to talk about how they make choices between either two objects or three objects, or how they respond to familiar or new directions. Under pragmatic communication, which tends to be a strength for children with Angelman syndrome, um, parents talk about how the children might greet, say hello, or say goodbye to others, may comfort others, play games, or use other people's names. The next step after we understood what were the important concepts we want to measure with our ORCA measure through our concept solicitation, we wanted to then draft our ORCA measure, writing questions that follow best practices and guidelines for survey development. And so here is an example section of a series of seven items that relate to the concept of how a child might seek attention from someone else in their life. And in this draft set of questions from the ORCA, you can see questions like, does your child cry or fuss to seek attention? The um, 2B, does your child look at someone to seek attention? 2E, does your child use a specific gesture or sign to seek uh, attention? 2F, does your child use a word or word approximation? And, and then 2G, does a child use a device to seek attention? The response options were no, yes, but not consistently, and yes, consistently. Once we developed this draft questionnaire, our next step was to conduct what's called cognitive testing. So what we ended up doing was conducting two rounds of in-depth interviews with 12 parents or caregivers per round and these parents had children of different age ranges. And we sat down with these parents and had them go through the ORCA measure item by item. And we evaluated which items perform well, which items might uh, need to be modified, what items might need to be removed, and what additional items we might need to add to make sure that the questions were understandable and were were relevant to what the parent sees in their child's communication ability. And so if you remember that block of questions I showed you earlier, we ended up making significant changes to it and to items throughout the ORCA measure in a number of key ways. For example, in these block of questions, 
if you remember two uh, e here about does your child use a specific gesture and sign to seek attention, parents just couldn't understand what that was referring to, and we ended up dropping the item from the next steps, uh, next set. In addition, you'll see that we introduced a reference period in the past 30 days, which parents thought was a useful reference or time frame for which to observe or see different types of communication with the child. And we changed the response options to a sort of a frequency type of response options. Again, this made sense to the parents of no or only once, sometimes or yes, almost all the time. Once we felt after our second round of interviews that parents both understood the ORCA measure and the questions were relevant to the uh, parents' observation of their children's communication ability, the next step we wanted to do is make sure that the questions in the ORCA could be translated to multiple languages since we are just focused on English. And so we sent out the ORCA measure to a translation company who reviewed our measure to make sure that it could be translated e relatively easy to such languages as Spanish, French, and Chinese. After the translatability review, the next step was for us was to do quantitative testing and, or what we call psychometric testing. And the goal of psychometric testing was to collect data on our ORCA measure from a large number of parents or caregivers of individuals with Angelman syndrome and they use a variety of tests to look at the validity of the ORCA measure, which addresses the issue of, does the ORCA measure what it's supposed to measure, that is communication ability. We're also interested in the reliability of the ORCA measure, and reliability relates to the extent to which a measure is, is free from measurement error. And so as part of our study design, uh, we sought to have over 250 parents of children with Angelman syndrome complete our questionnaire with their children's ages between two and 40 years of age. Parents were identified through the FAST organization's Facebook page and other distribution lists. And we asked the parents to complete the ORCA at two time points, five to 12 days later to look at test retest reliability. When parents completed our questionnaire online, they completed demographic questions about themselves and their child. They identified the type of Angelman syndrome mutation type the child has, whether the child experienced seizures as well, or if the child experienced sickness and hospitalizations in the past 30 days. They completed our ORCA measure, of course, and then other related measures um, like the CSBS and the Promise Mobility Scale um, to help us validate the ORCA measure. In terms of the findings, what I want to refer you back to is, remember when I was talking to you about some of the limitations of existing communication measures? Specifically, we found that many children with Angelman syndrome have what we call a floor or basement effect, which means they all get the exact same score on their communication ability. Well, what you're looking at here in this graph is the distribution of ORCA scores across the 295 caregivers or parents who completed our measure. And what you see in this distribution is nice, what we call somewhat close to a normal distribution of, um, of scores. And this is exciting because you don't see that typical baseline or floor effect. Each child was able to get a unique ORGA score. And in fact, our ORCA scores have a range from 26.16 up to 83.24. And so what you see here is no one in the sample actually scored at the highest range for ORCA. And the importance of this is that if this measure was able to use in a trial, there is enough room at the ceiling to detect changes in this distribution over time. So we're very excited to see this distribution. We also found um, other evidence for the validity and reliability of the ORCA measure. We found that the ORCA measure had strong associations with the communication symbolic behavior scale of 0.82 correlation and had a moderate correlation with the promise mobility score of 0.53. The ORCA was able to distinguish among Angelman syndrome types as well as distinguish children who either had or had not a seizure over the past year. The reliability was very good with an internal consistency of 0.89.
and a test read test reliability of 0 0.90. Anything above 0.7 is adequate or good. So again, we're in that very strong reliability range. Following our quantitative assessment, our, what we're currently in the process of doing is what we call the dissemination implementation phase. And therefore, under this phase, we are distributing the ORCA measure on a, in a non-commercial, publicly available license. And we're looking for opportunities for other researchers to use ORCA measures to help build a body of evidence, as well as looking for opportunities to expand and translate the ORCA measure. So let me summarize some of our activities to date. Number one, we were able to meet the deadline for FAST and they have, are, have included the ORCA measure in the, um, the gene text biotherapeutics trial that you'll hear about later today in the conference. We are rapidly writing up all of our results from all those steps I summarized with you, such as the cognitive testing and psychometric testing and, and plan to submit that to peer reviewed scientific journals. We are currently working with a translation company to translate the English version of ORCA into other, uh, into other uh, foreign languages so it can be used in multinational trials. We've also experienced broad interest in the ORCA measure, not just within the Angelman syndrome community, but in other rare neurodevelopmental disorders. And as you'll see in this table below, what we are currently working with our collaborators on is within the Angelman syndrome community, we have at least three companies or organizations that are currently using or will be soon using the ORCA measure and another three companies or organizations that um, have expressed extreme interest in using ORCA in their Angelman syndrome community. Outside Angelman syndrome, we have found um, that there are three other rare neurodevelopmental um, disorders that are currently using or plan to use ORCA soon. And then well over 16 other rare conditions have expressed deep interest in using the ORCA measure. And we're currently discussing with them about plans to use the ORCA measure. So we are very excited about this uptake and use. It's really certainly meeting a gap or need in the research community. And so in conclusion, we have found through this extensive process of using qualitative and quantitative methods that there is strong evidence for the validity and reliability of the ORCA measure in Angelman syndrome. As I expressed in the previous slide, we're also working with other organizations or companies to collect additional data on the ORCA as we continue to refine it and continue to expand and build a body of evidence about the properties of Angelman syndrome. In addition, what makes ORCA such a very valuable tool and why we're seeing a lot of interest among a number of key um, stakeholders and organizations both within Angelman and outside the Angelman syndrome community is that the ORCA assesses a broad range of communication concepts organized under expressive, receptive, and pragmatic communication. The ORCA measure allows for multiple communication modalities so it's not simply verbal speech, but includes gestures, signs, and use of um, uh, aids or devices to communicate. The caregivers can complete the ORCA independently without the need of a communication expert or speech language pathologist. And typically a parent can complete this independently within 15 to 20 minutes. And as noted, the ORCA is designed for use in clinical trials to get a baseline assessment of the child's abilities and a post-treatment assessment to look at changes over time. And then lastly, I wanna express my deep gratitude and thanks both to the FAST organization for supporting the development and evaluation of the ORCA measure, but also most importantly to the Angelman syndrome community for your time and your effort to provide us feedback and their answer to the question ORCA that allows us to develop the ORCA under a very short relatively time span. So it's your contribution that has made the ORCA a high quality. And with that, I hope you have a very wonderful day.